it's really hard to know if the code you're writing is clean and well maintainable or if it's got a lot of problems with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of the most common mistakes that React developers make and how you can fix those mistakes to make your code cleaner and easier to maintain. Also, if you're interested in diving deep and really learning React, make sure to check out my full React course I'll link down in the description below. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now to get started, I have this folder called React State Update open, and I have a Noob, Advanced, and Pro folder which contains different levels of code quality. And we're going to go through each one individually, starting with the Noob and working our way up to Pro. I also have use effect and list related changes that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But first, we're going to start with state related changes. So if we go into the new folder, we have this simple counter application. And inside of here, all we're doing is we're rendering out the count. We have a button to decrease the count and a button to increase the count, as you can see on the right side of the screen. And this is a huge problem that a lot of people run into with React when they first get started. And that's that they try to change the state directly. As you can see, we have a use state here, which takes in our initial count. And here we have count and set count. And this increment count is just modifying our count. It's not actually using this set count to update the state. So when we click the plus or minus, you'll notice nothing actually happens, even though we're changing our count variable. And if we inspect and look at our console, and we click this plus button and the minus button, you can see that our state is actually being saved inside of here and being logged out. Our count is actually being changed, but it's not actually rendering it to our component because we're not using this set count function. So let's just change this out for the more advanced version. There we go, and we can come over to the advanced version and immediately when I click the plus and minus button, you'll notice it actually works and changes our state, which is exactly what we want. And that's because we're using the set state, or in this case, set count function instead of directly modifying our state. And a good way to ensure that you're always using this set count or set state function is to use const to define your state variable. That way you're not as likely to change the state variable because it's defined as a constant. And if you try to change it, you'll get an error thrown to you, which will just try to help you remind you that you need to use this set count or set whatever version, the function, instead of actually directly setting the state itself. But this also has a few problems related to it. If we just inspect our page over here, go to the console and we click plus, You'll notice that the count being printed out is actually whatever the count was before. See it prints out zero, we click plus again, now it prints out one even though our count is actually two. And the reason for that is that this set count function is actually asynchronous. It runs in the background, so we call set count and it doesn't actually change our count yet. And then we log out our count, so our count hasn't been changed yet because this runs asynchronously. So we need some way to be able to figure out that we're actually changing our count. Another thing about this advanced version that I like much better than the previous version is that you'll see down here we're using prop types and we're saying that our initial count must be a number. And this is really important because if by accident we pass in here the string one instead of the actual number one to our initial count, which is something that's very easy to do, and we save, you'll immediately see that we get an error in our console saying that initial count is of type string and it should be of type number, which is great because if we click plus, you'll notice we're doing string addition instead of actually number addition. So we're just adding a one to the string instead of adding the number one to one. So it's really important to have these prop types set up to make it really easy to figure out if you have an error like that, because it'll show up right in your console. Let's just change this back to the number one. And now the very last thing that I want to talk about is this is actually flawed, because if we were to do set count of, you know, one twice here, let's say we want to add two and we want to subtract two every time we increment and decrement, if we save and click plus, you'll notice it still only increments by one. And that's because we're not actually getting the real count variable when we're trying to set it. So I'm going to go over to the pro version now and show you how we can fix that. Let's just jump over and make sure we render out the pro version. Save that and let's look at what this code looks like. You'll notice a lot of things are very similar. We have our state being set up the same. We have our button being rendered the same. Our prop types are the same. But one major difference you'll notice is here in set count, we're passing it a function instead of passing the value. And the reason for that is any time inside of your state that you're modifying the actual state variable based on the previous state, so in our case, we're modifying our count based on whatever the count is currently. So we're getting our current count, which is passed to this function, and then we're adding one to that instead of using the count variable here. So instead of having count plus one like this, we're using this function version, which gives us the current value of count no matter what. So now, even if we were to call this twice and we want to add two and subtract two, 
Now when we click plus, you'll see it's properly adding two because it first calls set count and it'll give us our current count of one, for example, adds one, gives us two. And then when it gets to this second set count, our current count is now two. So two plus one is going to give us three. So it's properly adding and subtracting by two each time. Another thing you'll notice is these console logs are actually removed from our increment and decrement count. And instead it's put inside of this thing called use effect. And if we inspect our page, go to our console, clear this out here and click the plus icon, you'll notice it properly logs out two, which is our current count. If we go down by one, you'll see it logs out one and it's no longer behind. And the reason for that is use effect is going to get run anytime these dependencies change. So anytime anything in this array changes, it reruns our use effect. So in our case, anytime our count changes, we're logging out our new count. And this is done after all of our count changes are done. So that's why we're able to get the updated fresh count value as opposed to when we had the console log up here. This was not giving us the current value of the count because it's obviously happening asynchronously. The set count happens later after this console log runs. So that's why we need this use effect in order to do that. The big takeaway from this section is really just understanding how state works in React, how you can update state in React, and how the asynchronous nature of setting the state works. Once you really understand that, it becomes so much easier to work with state in ways that don't cause weird bugs that you don't expect, like in, for example, this first example, or here where we had two set counts in a row. If you just understand how state works and when to use the function version, when not to, it becomes so much easier to work with. Now let's move on over to our next example, which is going to be this React use effect. So let me just close out here, get into that folder, and let's just start up our application. And essentially inside of here, what we're focusing on is really how use effect works and how we can purposely use use effect in order to do exactly what we want. So again, we have different versions, the noob, advanced, and pro. I'm just going to comment out everything but the noob version. Zoom this out. And as you'll see here, we have a text box to enter information as well as a button, which is allowing us just to toggle the color of this button from black to white. And inside of here, let's see exactly what our code is doing. So we have state for our name. We have our dark variable, which is the state related to that button. And then we have this user, which is our age and name. So our age gets passed in through the props. As you can see in here, we're passing that prop 25 over into our user. And then we have this button style, which is just, you know, a variable that's determined based on if the dark or light value is set to true, it just determines our color of our button text and the background color of our button. And then we're just applying all that in our input. We have our value and our on change. Our button has that style being applied. And when we click on it, we just toggle that variable and we're making sure to use the correct version of setting our state by using the current value instead of just saying that we want to invert this dark variable. We're actually getting the current value by using that function version. And again, we have prop types down here, which is great to use, but there's quite a few problems with this code. It looks good on the surface. It seems like everything is working. And we have this use effect here, which is logging out our user for us every single time our user changes. And if we inspect, just clear out our console here and refresh our page, we're going to notice a few things immediately. We can ignore these warnings because they're related to the other sections of our code. So we'll just clear this out. And if we start typing in here, you're going to notice we immediately get a warning. And that's just saying a component is changing from uncontrolled to controlled because it started out with an undefined value and now it has a defined value. And this is a huge problem a lot of people run into. So you'll see here we set the value to our name and our name is by default undefined because we don't pass anything to use state. And when you pass undefined or null to the value inside of a React component, along with an on change, this value is saying, okay, if you pass in null, then this is an uncontrolled component, which means React really doesn't control it. It lets the browser do all the normal controls. While if you pass it a value and an on change, it's saying, okay, now you have a controlled component in which you have to manually set the value every single time it renders. So we're going from uncontrolled to controlled, which is a big no-no in React. You definitely don't want to do that. So to get around this, you always want to make sure that you're passing an empty string here as a default value for your inputs instead of null, because that way, when you come in here, we clear this out and we start typing, we're no longer going to get that error because we have a default value of an empty string, which is not null or undefined. So this is saying, okay, this is a controlled input all the way from the beginning. And this is something that a lot of people do incorrectly, and it's a super easy thing to fix. Also, you'll notice whenever we change our user's name, it outputs our user, which is exactly what we want. But when we toggle our theme, you'll also notice it's logging out our user. We only want to log the user when it changes. And the reason that this isn't working is because of the way our use effect is set up. In order to make sure something only renders in a use effect when you want it to, you need to make sure you pass a dependency array that includes all the things that you need to work for when it changes. So when our user changes, we want to run this use effect. 
Now, if we save this, you may have think that we solved the problem, but we actually still have the exact same problem. You see, everything works fine, but when we toggle our theme, it still prints out our user. And the reason for that is a little bit tricky, but essentially what happens is every time this component renders, we create this user variable here, which is an object. And this is a brand new user object. So our old user object is actually different than our new user object. Even though they have the same values inside of them, the age and the name are exactly the same, the actual reference of those objects is different because they're two different brand new objects. So they don't actually equate to each other. So that's why this use effect is not working. So I'm gonna take a look at the advanced version and show you how we can fix that. Over here in the advanced version, you'll notice almost everything is exactly the same. We have that use state with our default value. Everything is the same here, everything's the same here. The one major difference you're gonna notice is our use effect now has name and age inside of it. So if we just save this and go over to our app and make sure that we render out this advanced version. There we go, this is our advanced version. Let's inspect our page. Go over to our console and just see if this works. We start printing out, okay, that works. And when we toggle our theme, you notice it doesn't actually change and log out our user. So that's exactly what we want. But you'll notice we get a warning up here in React. It says React hook use effect has a missing dependency user. Either include it or remove the dependency array. And essentially what this is saying is inside of this advanced component, we're using this user variable inside of our use effect, but it doesn't appear inside of our dependencies here. So it's saying, hey, maybe you made a mistake because you are using user, but you don't have it in your dependencies. And essentially what we're doing is we're circumventing that because age and name are the only two things inside of our user. So we're just putting them here saying, if age or name change, we know our user changed. So we're kind of telling ourselves that we know that this works, but it'd be much better if we could just put user here, because what if we add a new property to user, such as, you know, birthday, for example. And now whenever birthday changes, we also want our use effect to run. But right now we'd have to remember to put birthday inside of here. And while right now that's really easy, they're quite close together, this could be something where user gets passed in from another component, maybe six you know, parents up, and remembering that way down in this child is going to be nearly impossible. So it's much better if we're able to just put user inside of here and then have the user take care of if it needs to create a new user and remember if it's the same as the old user. And that is what the pro version of our code does. So let's open up our pro version real quick here and make sure that we render that out inside of our app. There we go. So inside of this pro version, a lot of things are very similar. Everything up here is essentially the same. This is the same. All the stuff down here is the same, but our use effect now has a user inside of the array. And if we come over here and inspect our page, you'll notice that if we just close this out, when we change our user, it properly updates. But when we toggle our theme, it doesn't render out new users to the page. So we know that it's working just the same as this advanced version when we had name and age, but we have user in here. So how exactly is that working? Well, what's happening is up here on this line, let me give it a little room to breathe so we can take a look at it. What you can see here is we have something called use memo. What this use memo does is it essentially says, here's some dependencies as the second property. And whenever any of these change, I want you to rerun this function and return whatever's inside of it and set it to this variable here. So essentially here, we have a function right here, and this function just returns a new object that has the age and the name. So it's just returning our user object. As you can see, this section up here, age name, this object is essentially what we put inside of our use memo. And then the second parameter of use memo is the things that we want to check. Whenever the name or the age changes, we want to rerun use memo and return to us a new object. So what happens is when this component renders, if name and age did not change, use memo was going to return to us the same user we had the last time we rendered our component, which means that the user here is going to be the same as the user down here because they are both the exact same object, the exact same reference. It didn't have to create a new object it used the old object from the last render. So these two are going to be equal to each other. That's why we can have the user inside of our use effect here. And when we toggle our theme, it doesn't actually reprint out the user because this use memo is not giving us a new user. It's giving us the same user as is already defined down here. Now this may seem really confusing, especially if you aren't super familiar with reference versus value. So I have a video on pass by reference versus pass by value. I'll link in the cards in description. You can check out and it'll explain all of this in much more depth. Now, finally, I want to talk about the last big place that people make mistakes in React, and that is with list. So let's just back out here to that list, and let's just make sure we start this up. Whoops. Make sure we CD into that. There we go. NPM start. And this is just going to run this. And essentially what we have here is a very typical to-do list application. Close out of all of these, and we'll open up this new version first and make sure in our app 
all we're doing is rendering out the new version. And as you can see here, we have a list of to-dos, which have an ID, a true false for complete, as well as a name saying exactly what that to-do is, as you can see rendered over here. And we're just passing those into each of our components. And now if we go inside of this to-dos, this is our noob to-dos here. As you can see, we get that initial list of to-dos. We're passing that to use state. So we have our to-dos here, as well as we have our selected to-do. We scroll down a little ways to here where we're rendering. We're just looping through all of our to-dos, passing them to a new component, as well as passing some functions that we can use to toggle the to-do, as well as select the individual to-do we want to do. And then we're rendering that selected to-do down here. Then inside of to-do, this is gonna be pretty straightforward and the same for all of our components. All we're doing here is toggling complete. So we're just passing the ID of the to-do we want to toggle complete to, as well as selecting, we're passing the ID of the to-do we want to select. And in here, we're just rendering out our to-do. And we have an input that says it's checked if it's complete. And the on change just toggles our to-do whenever we change our input. So if we toggle our to-do here, click it, it's going to change the actual you know, checked state of our to-do by calling this toggle complete function. But there is an error here. You can see when I click these checkboxes, it's not actually doing anything. The select is working. It's popping up whichever one I select down here on the bottom. But this is not doing anything when I click these checkboxes. And the reason for that is a huge mistake people make when they're dealing with modifying arrays instead of state, in that here we have our set to-dos which is toggling our current to-do that we click on based on this ID. So here's our list of to-dos. And what we're doing is we're getting the to-do based on our ID. So we're just saying current to-dos.find, get the ID, or get that to-do based on that ID. And then all we're doing is toggling the complete of that to-do to be the opposite of what it currently is. Essentially, we're just flipping the to-do complete to be either true if it's false or false if it's already true. And then we're just returning our current to-dos. The problem with this though, is we're directly modifying this variable, this current to-dos, because we're getting a to-do from it and then directly modifying that. And when you're dealing with React, you never ever want to directly modify state, as I showed up here in these state examples. What you wanna do instead is actually return a brand new array. And this brand new array is going to contain the updated to-do instead of returning the same array with modified variables inside of it. That's why, as you can see over here, none of these checkboxes are working. So let's move on to the advanced version to see how that works. We'll comment this out, get the advanced version in here, and let's make sure we open that up. This to-do component here is essentially exactly the same. Nothing inside of here has changed at all. But inside of our to-dos component, you'll notice this function up here for toggling complete is actually changed a bit. And you'll notice also when we click our checkboxes, they actually all work. And the reason for that is what we're doing is we're calling the map function. And the map function loops through our entire array of to-dos and returns to us a brand new array without changing anything inside of the current array. And that's exactly what we're doing. As you can see here, we're checking to see if we have the current ID. And if we do have that current ID, instead of modifying our to-do, we're creating a brand new to-do. So a brand new object that we're creating and returning in place of that current object. We're never ever modifying anything inside of current to-dos. And that is why this is able to work over here because we're returning a brand new array without modifying anything in the existing array at all. Another important thing, if we scroll down here a little ways, is you'll see we have a key being passed to our to-do. If we inspect our page, and we just go over to the console, clear this out, and if we get rid of this key and save, you'll notice immediately we get each child in a list should have a unique key prop. And what this is doing is inside of React, we have this key prop here. Whenever a object changes, it can look at the key to see if it needs to re-update that object. And it can do just one element in our array and update that instead of updating every single element in the array. Because if our array changes, but only one of our to-dos in the array changes, we don't need to re-render every single to-do. We only need to re-render the one with the key that changed. So having keys allows you to really quickly and easily make sure that you only re-render components and change components that need to be re-rendered. And it really helps out with performance inside of React. So it's always recommended you have keys anytime you do any form of listing, looping, or mapping. So inside of this example, we essentially have fixed this key problem. We fixed this problem with handling the toggling of complete of our to-dos, but we actually have another problem. If we select a to-do and we check our to-do up here, you notice it does not check our to-do down here, even though they're both the exact same to-do. You can see that because when we click the checkbox down here, it's actually toggling our to-do up there. And it doesn't matter what to-do we have selected, it works for all of them. And this is kind of weird. You would think if this to-do up here is toggled, the one selected down here should be toggled because they should be the exact same to-do. But what's happening is we're committing the very typical sin of storing derived state inside of our state. So we can see here we have a selected to-do, which derives from this to-do's array, because this to-do right here is from this array. 
but we're storing a copy of that to-do inside of this state. So now we have our to-dos here, and we have a copy of one of those to-dos stored here. So when we update the to-do in this list, we're not actually updating this copy. Instead of copying this, what we want to do is get a reference to it so that they both are the exact same object. So let's jump over to the pro version and let me show you how that works. Inside of our app, let's render out the pro version and we'll open up that pro code. Immediately, let's first just select something and when we click down here, you notice it updates both of our to-dos at the same time. It does this for all of our to-dos and it does it for both the checkboxes. This is really useful because now these are both referencing the same object. And how exactly does this work? Well, it's a very straightforward change. All we're doing is instead of storing a copy of our to-do in state, we're storing just the ID of the to-do that we've selected. And then we're getting the current to-do from this list of to-dos. So we're getting that same exact object. We're not getting a copy of it. We're getting the exact same reference. So what we're doing in state is we're making sure that we're not storing derived state. We're storing the values we need in order to get this derived piece of state. And this derived piece of state just gets recalculated every single time we render our component. So now if we change our to-do up here, it doesn't matter because we just have our ID stored. We don't have any copies of the value stored and it's getting the same selected to-do from our list of to-dos that's already changed. That's why when we check these checkboxes, it updates it in both places at once. This idea of derived state is a fairly complex topic a lot of people mess up. So I actually have an entire blog article on the topic. I'll link down in the description for you to check out. Other than that one minor change though, pretty much everything else inside of here is exactly the same and there's really no other changes to worry about. And those are all the major React problems I see developers make. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my full React course linked down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.